Hey there, Gracious Gang. Welcome back to the Gracious Guest channel on YouTube and our Luke series. We're going through the Gospel of Luke one chapter each day. And uh, we're going to go through Luke chapter 14 today. But before we do that, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that little thumbs up down there. Uh, the little bell to get notifications is good too. And feel free to share this series and anything else on this channel you think might benefit someone you know uh, by going more deeply into the word of our Lord. And so let's jump into Luke chapter 14. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler who belonged to the Pharisees, they were watching him. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. Then he took him and healed him and let him go. And he said to them, which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well, will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he marked how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by anyone to a marriage feast, do not sit down in a place of honor lest a more eminent man than you be invited by him, and he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this man, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you, for every one who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your kinsmen or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. When one of those who sat at table with him heard this, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many, and at time for the banquet he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for all is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yokes of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported this to his master. Then the householder in anger said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and maimed and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Now great multitudes accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If any one comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, and wife and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, 
all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and take counsel, whether he is able with ten thousand troops to meet him who comes against him with twenty thousand? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassy and asks terms of peace. So therefore, whoever of you does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the land nor for the dunghill. Men throw it away, and he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As usual, there's a lot in there. But I'm particularly affected here as I'm reading this by that last, some of those last uh, analogies, those last examples and, and parables, but especially that last one, salt. Again, he says, salt is good, but if salt has lost its, its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? And this is related to parable that he gives, the, the, the similes, the similes of salt and light, right? You see in, in Matthew's gospel, um, you are the light of the earth, right? The light of the world, salt of the earth. Same idea here, right? That we Christians are to be the seasoning, the salt, the light, the leaven. Whether we're in academia or industry technology sector, the, you know, active paid ministry, you know, whatever the case may be, whether we're attorneys, stay-at-home parents, police officers, grocery store clerks, it doesn't matter that every one of us is called by Christ to be the, this flavor, this, this renewal of the world, that the kingdom of God is here now. It's, it's got a foothold in this fallen, broken world. There's something every one of us can contribute to that. And, and what we do is we contribute by getting out of his way, um, by offering our Lord our own uniqueness, our own complete unrepeatable nature. There's something he's doing in and through you that he can't do through anybody else. That's why you're here. If he didn't need you as part of this story, you wouldn't be here in the first place. So take heart wherever you're at today, whatever you're going through, whoever you are, you are important. Don't forget that. And God bless you. We're going to conclude with Our Lady of Chestahova prayer in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Mother of Chestahova, thou art full of grace, goodness, and mercy. I consecrate to thee all my thoughts, words, and actions, my soul and body. I beseech thy blessings and especially prayers for my salvation. Today I consecrate myself to thee, good mother, totally with body and soul, amid joy and sufferings, to obtain for myself and others thy blessings on this earth and eternal life in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next time for Luke chapter 15. You don't want to miss it. Take care.